So we're gonna look at solving for a variable today. And really it's not any different than what we've been doing in terms of solving equations. Uh, we just won't end up with a really cute answer like two or negative four. So, but we still do the same sort of unraveling that we would do in any sort of uh, multi-step equation. So here we have an equation that says three X plus Y equals Z. And the directions say that we want to solve for x. So in other words, we want x to be by itself. So this is what I need to be alone. Uh, one thing that's really good is for you to start to look at and say, all right, what, what's going on with this specific variable? So x is being multiplied by 3. Then I'm adding y to it. So if I unravel it and work backwards, the first thing that I want to do is I have to, like we've talked about before, get that variable term by itself first. So the first thing that I unravel is the adding of y. So I will just subtract y from both sides. Now when I do that, that leaves there. Uh, and I'm left with 3x on the left. And what do I have on the right? I have z minus y. They're not like terms, so I can't combine them. So I just leave it like this. Uh, now, I'm looking at how do I get x by itself still. So it's being multiplied by 3. I'll undo that by dividing by 3. So if I divide here by 3, I have to divide this whole side by 3 as well. And this cancels out. So really, uh, x is by itself. And to find x, I would take whatever z is, subtract y from it, and divide it by 3. And so that is our answer. So we're pretty much just rearranging the equation to isolate a specific variable. All right? Okay, let's look at another example. So we use this to rearrange formulas a lot. And so a pretty common formula is that Fahrenheit equals nine-fifths of Celsius plus 32. All right. So what I want to do is I want to solve this for Celsius. All right. So I'm going to look again at the variable I want. And what's happening to it? Well, I'm multiplying by nine-fifths, and then I'm adding 32 to that. So this is very similar in a setup to the last one that we looked at. We just have this fraction here, which please don't let that scare you off. Uh, again, this is the variable I want, so I have to get this chunk of it by itself first. So I will subtract 32 from both sides. Uh, again, this will leave here. So on the left, I have F minus 32. And on the right, uh, that equals 9 fifths times C. Now, C is being multiplied by 9 fifths. If you remember when we talked about dividing or undoing multiplication by a fraction, you know, uh, realistically we want to divide when we see multiplication. But when we divide by a fraction, we end up really multiplying by the reciprocal. So in this case, to get rid of the 9 fifths, I'll multiply this side by 5 ninths. So I have to multiply this side by 5 ninths. I have to multiply the whole side. So I'll put it in parentheses so I know that whatever's on the left has to be multiplied by 5 ninths. So when I do this, these will cancel out and it will leave me C. So I'm just going to kind of flip my equal sign here. So C equals 5 ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32, or whatever the Fahrenheit degree is, all right? So again, I've rearranged that original equation by just undoing what's happening to that specific variable. Uh, so, oh, this is what our answer looks like, okay? 
Let's look at one more and we'll have a little practice with it. So, So, uh, at first this one doesn't seem too bad, right? I'm gonna solve for K. And if I look at what's happening to K, K is, M is being divided by K. So we kind of approach this a little bit differently. You can think about it in terms of like multiplication families. Uh, for example, if I have 20, divided by 5, that equals 4. These can flip right around, so 20 divided by 4 also equals 5. And really, so if you have m being divided by k, and that equals x, uh, then really m divided by x is going to equal k. So if you're comfortable with that same sort of principle being applied to just variables, then it's pretty straightforward to write that K, um, hold on, let me erase my 20s here. If you're comfortable with that, you can flip this around so that M over X equals K. All right. If you want to, realistically, what you have to do is you have to get K out of the denominator. So to move K, up, you're going to have to multiply both sides by it. All right? So this would cancel out. This is kind of the long way of getting to here. So what I have is m equals x times k. I guess that's a little k. And so to get k by itself here, I would divide by x on both sides. These cancel out. And so then I end up at the same spot I am here. All right. Again, this is if you're comfortable understanding that they kind of are like a multiplication family or fact family, whatever that might be called. Um, and this would be the actual math of how you take a variable in the denominator and get it up into the numerator. And to do that, you multiply both sides by that variable, and then it would cancel out in the denominator side, and you could then work in isolating it through the rest of the equation. So we're gonna look at a couple of those um, tonight, maybe 20 of them or so, of again, rearranging equations, and then we will look at a small test on equations next week. All right, thank you.